Well, hello, and welcome back to more Let's Play Ravenloft, the Stone Prophet. Last time we were together, we made our way into the Sphinx, and we started exploring its first few levels. We've come across a magical item called the Thought Bottle, which I think is in here. Yes. And somewhere, somewhere down here, is a magic mouth that will tell us the magic word necessary to open the Thought Bottle. Also picked up a new party member, Sephisra, who is a jackalware. He's going to hang out with us for a little bit. We also found a key that can open red doors, which I think is that one and that one. So let's go check them out. As I mentioned uh, in previous videos. The Sphinx is a large area, with lots of secrets and lots of goodies. And we're going to try to find as many of them as we can. Right, now, here's the thing. If we click on the staff like I just did, we use one of its charges. So if we want to attack with it like a normal weapon, we have to click on the enemies. I don't particularly care for it. I think it goes a little too slow that way. But if the staff runs out of charges, the staff is destroyed. It's a darn shame because the staff is really good. It's a plus three weapon in its own right. Which makes it one of the stronger weapons we're going to find in the game. I mean, even our Warhammer is plus two. Our Paladin Sword is plus three. Although our two-handed sword is also plus three. Every character can use the staff. There's another reason I like it. The map to the buried temple of Ra. Alright. Now, I actually went by this temple earlier in the game because I want to pick up the teleporter. But here's how we find the way there. In the desert, we find the... the statues of the hands reaching up into the sky. And we walk south to the first rock, east to the next, and then south until we fall into it. Now since we've been there and we have the teleporter, we don't need that map, so we're going to leave it here. Well, there are two, uh, two staffs of thunder and lightning. gateway to the Temple of Ra. Didn't we just look at that? No. He killed many priests, making them into his undead slaves. Yes, it is Anctipod of whom I speak. Such treachery. And from one favored by Ra. His fear of death drove him to turn against all those who had served him. As priests of Ra, they could not let su such madness go unanswered. There stepped from among us one to put Anctipod in his tomb. In the darkness of Pharaoh's rest, he sent our traitor king. From the gateway linking Pharaoh's rest and the Temple of Ra was disabled. The seals which must be set in place in both locations were taken down and shattered. The pieces we scattered about. In joy we watched as the link between the entombed Pharaoh and Ra was destroyed. Well that's actually what we're trying to do right now, is to find all those pieces so we can link the two places together again. Alright, Mimic is slain and we didn't get stuck in any goo. Anything in there? Nope. So there was another door which we needed a red key to open. Let's see if we can find it. Is it over this way? No, it's over there. But you know what, let's check it down that way since we're here anyways.
Well, that's a lot of potential mimics. One of them. Let's use some of our spells. The lightning bolt will do the trick. spells again. So Beatrice at any rate has some new ones to play around with. We are stuck. Nothing in there? How about in you? Well, if nothing else, we get a couple of potions of healing now that a deal. Ooh. Staff of Swarming Insects. We'll hang on to that. And we open up a secret passage. Let's see what... Well, I see a button. Opens up another secret passage. Pushed away. Well, we got pushed to the east, so let's go eastward around. Take care of this Sphinx real quick. And then we'll push this button. Alright, now I'm betting you're a mimic. Ooh, no. Dreams of Anctopot. In these days, mothers frighten their children with tales of Anctopot. They say he stalks the night, a mummy wandering the desert sands. It is a tale for children. The truth of it is worse. A reality of dreams and the fitful state in which a monster sleeps. All mummies are prone to, prone to long periods of slumber, and Anctopot is no exception. According to the most reliable sources, he lies sealed in Pharaoh's rest, a state similar to vampiric hibernation. His mind has entered a dreamlike state. Unfortunately, the powers of Anctopot are so great that his dreams alone affect the land. It is said of storms, disease, and disasters in Harakir that they are the wrath of the dreaming Anctopot. So, could that horrible disease be a result of dreaming Anctopot? Ow. Well, we made it all the way around this chamber. Let's go see if we can open that door. And I can hit by more magic missiles. Oh, we got water. Drink up. Pressure plate opens the door. Pressure plate closes the door. stuck. Well, it was only a brief period of being stuck. touch of death. I am much worried over the health of my lord Anctopot. Each breath comes as a distraction, as though he fears it might be his last. His search to extend his life consumes him. The palace has become silent, and within its walls we walk about as in a tomb. The music once played is gone. It is said the priests of Ra no longer trust my lord. Worse, a series of deaths has begun among them. 
How can they blame my dear lord, my suffering lord? They call it Anctopot's touch of death. Were it in my powers, I would punish them for such insolence. Were it in my powers, I would heal my lord Anctopot of all misery. Well, mummies do have a touch of death. Although it doesn't exactly instantly kill, it diseases the person they touch. And it slowly kills them, usually turning them into a mummy. But Anctopot's was even worse. Anctopot, before he became a mummy, mummy, was cursed, so that while the sun was out, his touch would do no harm. But when the sun set, and he was no longer under the raw's light, his touch became deadly, and he ended up killing his wife and many other people as a result. Now, page three of the Guide of the Ancient Dead. Senmet is a mummy whose powers are limited, that is to say, not of the fourth or fifth ranks of invulnerability. Indeed, some actions may succeed in his destruction. Yet even when victory seems imminent, care must be taken. The blows of magical weapons are not enough. Seeing the beast fall before you is not enough. Soon the defeated hulk of bone and tattered cloth will rise. It shall seek you out. Yet in my Harakir studies, I have come across special mention, now and again, of a spell known as the Spell of Retirement. Only the most powerful priest have ever produced such a marvel. It is my belief that if such a scroll were to be read over the remains of Semet before he could be once again before he could once again arise, then the beast would be permanently destroyed. Well, and such is the case, since we did that. I don't know if our undead paladin says anything special if we come here with her and read that note. Truth is, I rarely use her. The times that I do use her are usually just to destroy Anctopot and get our uh, good deed points for doing so. Alright, let's be careful of this poison. And actually, before we go down this hole, let's go back this way. Hit by the magic missile. Let's see what's in here. Well, it's either a goodie or a mimic. Maybe I should say a little prayer. Buff, off, buff ourselves up a little bit. There's the blue key. No, it doesn't look like there was anything in there. Well, probably a good thing that we grabbed that blue key then. Because if we need the blue key over here, we have it. Now, thankfully, magic missiles don't hurt as much as fireballs. Avoid that. Let's go see what's down here. I saw an enemy. There he is. Come on, die, you horrible chicken. Pressure plate is going to do something. So we're going to run. And the Tears of Ra. There's a legend, one I've heard whispered, in the high places and low places of Harakir. In the age of beauty, it is said, in an age when innocence will walk the earth. There came among men mortals, too beautiful to bear. Their goodness blessed the fertile lands. By their grace they set an example for men and gods alike, yet no age lasts forever. In the end, the evils of desert and darkness rose up to overwhelm the pure of heart. 
In those days, the gods of goodness and purity wept. The tears of Ra fell to earth. These were tears of polished light. It is said they shone, they shone with a brilliance so great it caused vast destruction. So it was that the handmaidens of Ra were sent to collect the tears. Whether each and every tear was found is a matter of great study among scholars. Well, that is going to be useful later too. In fact, we learn a lot of things here that will be useful later. Oh, a lightning bolt. As it is written, as it has been foretold, I hold a secret. A word of command is mine to tell. Listen, for the history of Octopod belongs to he who speaks the name Hierophant. Well, if we have the magic word, Let's see if it works. The secret to the bottle is known to us. If memory serves, the command word is Hierophant. Ank to pot. One jewel this pharaoh sought. One prize. Immortality. The priests of Ra gathered, opposing Anctopot. One by one they fell victim to Anctopot's touch of death. The Hierophant, a great priest of Ra, determined to end the threat. In stealth, the Hierophant moved against the ruler of the land. Anctopot. Deep in dreams of immortality, heard nothing. In the fall of a shadow, the history of the land changed forever. The priests of Ra laid Anctopot to his rest. The threat to the priests of Ra seemed over. The Hierophant's battle won. Not so. The enmity between priest and pharaoh had just begun. And there we go. We learn a bit about the history between those two. It would seem that the Hierophant was responsible for the murder of Anctopot. And that's why he hates him so much. But like I said before, there is still more to do down here, and we're going to do it. Most importantly, we got to find one of those seal quarters. Just about every dungeon has at least one. I shouldn't say at least one, they all have one. bolts. Here you go, Jackal. Drink up. Ooh, a Wanda Frost. You know, I should really identify these at some point. Should have done it uh, last video before I saved and memorized new spells. Well, 
that looks clear. Careful that there's not any buttons to press. And what do you know, we did need that blue key. So now back over here, where the other blue door is. Erg, keep getting hit with magic missiles. Well, you know what? Magic missiles are a lot better than some of the other choices they get hit with. Fireballs and lightning bolts especially. your magic. of archery. Now, if I remember correctly, braces of archery make it so you fire arrows more effectively. But we haven't been using arrows, really. Alright, scroll one. The hero and the falcon. Alright, another rude interruption, but I am back. Now let's read the hero and the falcon. In the days when Anktapat ruled as Pharaoh in Harakir, his soldiers revered him, remaining faithful and true. From among the soldiers, elite guards were picked, and from these guards, the personal guard of the Pharaoh came. It was a great honor to be chosen. In the last days of Anktapat's mortal rule, a great hero earned this right, to stand, between, to stand between his king and the dangers of the land. Renowned for his skill with weapons and the trained falcon at his side, this warrior stood ready to sacrifice his own life, yet the one who slew Anktapot moved with such stealth, no chance was given. The hero stood guard, unknowing, while a pharaoh met his fate. So if there was a great hero who was responsible for protecting Anktapot, but Hierophant found a way past him. This hero also trained falcons. This may become important information later. So we want to go here and down to the next level. Which is good because we've been on this one level for a long time now. So I think before we go down, I'm going to cast Improved Identity, Improved Identify. And we're going to look at our goodies. Ooh, plus four ring of protection. Better than that, plus two. Maybe I should switch those. There we go, that's good. Now do I have room? Well, you just keep it on your person for the time being. Now we're using the bracers of archery. And you know what? Since we got these staffs, might as well put them to good use. It's like against you. Oh, 
up. Alright, so through the illusionary wall and down to the next level. Hmm. If there is a way to communicate with this presence, then we have not yet found it. There is something about this figure. An animation, a power held in check, but barely so. As if it would speak. Can you hear us? <laughs> hmm, so it's laughing at us. Now we can interact with this thing, but first. We can't interact with this thing. And I'm thinking, should I do it now or save it later? Well, I've been doing things ahead of schedule as it is, so might as well keep it up. We have this thing, the wishing cup. have it in our hands. Or we just have to talk to it. Now we're getting somewhere. There. We've also we've offered the cow a calcite wishing cup to the statue. Now, let's see if that makes a difference. Well met. well met, and thank you. The difference has been made. The cup is one of wishes, and that which you offer to me, I give freely back. Desires, yearnings, and hopes. You know them all. Every so often, fortune smiles on those who want as easily as it rewards those who try. From among these wishes, you may choose to forever slake your thirst while you roam the sands of Harakir, to grant you protection from fires both mortal and magical, though the heat of the Wall of Ra no magic can erase, to provide an immunity to poisons. One which shall end only when you rest far from the deadly venoms of our land. To grant health and fortune upon one fated to live apart from his kind. To bring acceptance to one who has known only the rejection of his people. Alright, so we got four choices for wishes. The first one will make it so that we never have to drink water again. It never becomes a problem. The thing, though, is water hasn't been a problem for us. So why do we want to spend our wish there? The next one is protection from fire. Now that's a pretty good one, because there are still lots of fire traps and fire enemies to deal with. Immunity to poison. Now that's a really good one. That means poisonous enemies will no longer bother us and poisonous areas will no longer bother us. Although diseased areas, I think, will still affect us. That means we'll also free up spells that we won't have to use a uh, remove poison on anymore. And then the last one, we can bring fortune upon another. Well, in that case, that brings fortune upon the beggar. We met him way, way back in Muhar. That will only uh, give us another goodwill point. We get no extra experience, no goodies, and the be old beggar just says people are being nice to him now. So I am really leaning between poison for protection from fire or immunity to poison. Now, protection from fire is really good, although I think that's like the protection we get from the rings of fire resistance, which would be nice to free up this, the ring space. But we don't have a lot of other rings to pick from. Now, immunity to poison will protect us from poisonous enemies, poisonous areas, and free up our spell slots. So, I think we're going to go with that one. We're going to ask for immunity to poison. Protection from poisons is yours. Hardly a chore. Before you had finished the request, it was done. 
Now go and be immune to all the poisons Harakir can offer. Alright, thank you very much. So not only... From that reaction, it's difficult to tell whether or not we made the correct choice. If there was a correct choice. I suppose, as it so often does, time will tell the tale. So yeah, we don't even need those ointments anymore. And these parafats of proof versus poison, if they even work, don't need those anymore either. So that's actually going to free up a lot of space for us. What do you have to say? You have entered the labyrinth of the magic. Priests and mages, the wise and the powerful have known this place. Held safe within, their secrets await study. The labyrinth of the magi. Hmm. Yep, even says it right here. I think we're getting close to finishing this. Are those buttons? No. But look, it's one of our statue buddies. An offering I await. Approach and deliver to me the likeness of a creature. In life it draws its prey beneath the waves, there to die. The armored lord of the riverbanks. So once again, we need to find figures of animals. But, even with our little distraction, we're probably around half an hour. So I think now is a good time as any to call it an episode. And we will get together and hopefully finish up the Sphinx in our next video. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Well grown grim and cold. Thief of life he tried to steal. And lift life from the gods hold.